Hello, everybody. We're back on They Talk, and we are going to continue our epic uh, series of Finland for Foreigners. That's right. Yes. Triple F. Talking about subjects that are really Finnish, but maybe someone else needs to know about them too. Or yeah. at least they want to know about them. Well, if you're at all thinking about coming to Finland or at least visiting Finland or have no... Or understanding Finland. Yeah. No even... Uh, didn't even think that you did have that kind of feeling. These are some things that are absolutely interesting in my opinion. And uh, we've talked about um, the Skalevala, the last episode, and um, we're going to talk about such things as uh, technological advancements like mobile phones. Mm. And, Nokia, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, but today... We are going to talk about these ancient beliefs that are pretty wild and weird, and uh, I think that I think a lot of people outside of Finland don't. Uh, maybe they don't even have an opinion, or they just see uh, Finland as a you know Christian Lutheran uh, country that uh, is very progressive in a way. Although I think a lot of people won't uh, di- didn't know or don't know that the church is not separated from the state. The church still has some hands in uh, on what the government, maybe not what they decide, but it's still there. However, these ancient pagan beliefs uh, did definitely exist here, as far as I know. And uh, Tapani here knows a little bit more about that kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about these kind of yeah, weird... Time before Christianity. Yes, and uh, when Finnish people were... Living in tree houses and things like, the like pagan, that. Pagan times. Yeah. yeah. Living in saunas. <laughs> no, not exactly, but yeah. Well, yeah. maybe maybe some did. Yeah. Well, I know that th- there was a thing even probably in during after the Christian times where you would be born mm. in the sauna and then die in the sauna. Yeah. I think we might have talked about that when we talked about saunas. Some die even today <laughs> in sauna. Yeah. <laughs> By accident. Yeah. But anyway, too hot. Yeah. Uh, now that you mentioned sauna and death in sauna, we had this competition, I believe, at La- in Lahti oh, some yeah. years ago when people were competing who can fucking be the sa- master yeah. in sauna, sauna contest. And Finnis were, uh, you know, this is a fucking basis for a joke, but it's not a joke. <laughs> Finnis were uh, having the sauna contest and there were Russians and Norwegians and whatever. The yeah. And the Finnish guy won, uh, but he got so badly burned that he had to be in a hospital. I think like he, they, couple of it was down to like a Finn and a Russian. Yeah. And the, yeah, Ru- the, the, the Finnish guy basically won because he didn't die. Yeah. Because the, the Russian, Russian guy unfortunately died. died. Yeah. They both were, as far as I remember in the article, that they were unconscious and needed to be dragged out. And their skin was basically coming off like a glove. And uh, absolutely brutal. But if somebody remembers the Finn's name, please I'm write sure you, in the yeah, comments. We could Google it right now. But. Yeah. Uh, There's yeah. some sisu right there, which we should do an, an episode or at least pop it in there. This. Finnish sisu. Yeah, I wonder or if stupidity. that... stupidity. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, maybe there are two different things or... Uh, not there's necessarily and not always. Invo- yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, uh, the Finnish pagan beliefs before the Christianity. Yeah. So uh, we had like a many uh, haltia, which would be translated in English as an elf. Right. But now when I mention the word elf... You probably immediately think about the Middle Earth or right. or Dragon Lands and Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and whatnot. It's nothing like that. Right. They were like um, spirits that inhabited places. Yeah. And they, they, they this, I, I would say, spirit would be probably a better mm. translation. Right. For what it actually did. Yeah, and it inhabited like uh, occupied a place, mm. and we had like different spirits to different places. Like let's say. We had trees and uh, spirits for uh, certain trees and hmm. and uh, even saunas and porches and and cattle and forest and right and uh, seas and uh, rivers and water. It was a very like nature based. Yeah, it was nature based stuff. And uh, by the way, that that uh, forest guy was named Tapio, if I believe, and and the Betehinen was the spirit. Or water, or elf, haltia, yeah, yeah, veden haltia, and uh, the dead had a huge impact hmm. on life of the living. All right. So, for example, you build a house, uh, and you own that house, you know, 
mm. and then you die. It's your house still, on according to those ancient beliefs, and you are there as a spirit in that house. Because you built it. Yeah, it's, yeah. you owned it. It was yours. Mm. So your son takes the house, your son's son takes the house, and mm. so forth. You are still owning it, and you are there, and you need to be honored and respected. Mm. Wow. So the dead had a lot of say, so to speak, in the world of the living. Yeah, and like a lot of respect. Yeah. And and like even the, even the, I believe if you had an accident, or you became sick, or you lost something, some ill ill thing came upon you. It it was thought that you might have been disrespecting some spirit, uh -huh. or not remembering, or honoring it correctly. Right. So it causes. It co they cause these problems for you. Mm. Which it's, yeah, it's pretty interesting because this kind of nature-based uh, belief system or almost religion, which maybe we won't call it a religion, but uh, I, I uh, think they set were of like beliefs or yeah, they were like a belief system mm. and culture, like the way of everyday living. Yeah, like it's, we have traffic laws here now. Yeah. And, and stuff i believe it was more like that cuz it's kind of ties in with like the say the a lot of these uh native cultures that these pagan uh, religions or cultures or beliefs where the nature was was the gods yeah and they which i guess in in a lot of ways it, it technically would be for them when they were you know if the crops didn't grow or if they couldn't find mm -hmm. the food or if the yeah. deers didn't uh, come to that area that year or something like that, then, you know, the what better way to explain it, you know, at those times. Um, so, I mean, it's really interesting how they, in, in those cultures like Native Americans, that they have this very similar thing of these gods that I inhabit trees and even grass, I guess, and water and, and the animals as well, you know. So it's, it's quite cool that... Uh, Finland actually had its own and I think this was quite maybe I mean maybe it bled across what we would consider now borders international borders but like it was very much a Finnish these beliefs we're talking about today is very much a Finnish thing yeah I think this is just on top of my head but I think it has something to do with our isolation from the our western neighbors like right. if you watch if you look at the map you can see that Sweden and Norway Norway are mm -hmm. like basically together there. Yeah. They just are separated by the border that is drawn oh. on the mm -hmm. map. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So the Viking things were more common there. They they had the Vikings and uh, Viking system there. Mm -hmm. They both both yep. of those countries. Uh us not so much no not so much. And between us and and Sweden is mainly sea. Yeah. Of course in the northern parts we are Connected, connected but. with the uh, land masses, but I believe we were we were more isolated, and even in the in the uh, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17 hundreds, you know, when we were under a uh, Swedish rule, we yeah. were more like a rural uh, erama, you know, area, yeah. like a, the darker parts of the yeah. Swedish realm. Right, you right. Know, it wasn't it, so much of an industrial revolution happening here at that time. No, no, no. And uh, like, an, I don't the industrial those days, but, but you know, like the we had more like a backwards type of <laughs> uh, part of the Swedish realm. Yeah. And I think it's because we were like divided by the sea. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it makes a lot of sense because it would take uh, an effort to get over here. Mm -hmm. You know, even now when you take the giant cruise ship over to Stockholm from Helsinki, it, it still takes, a, at the, I think the fastest one might even be 17 hours. Yeah. So, it, I mean, if you think back then, when you're rowing that amount, it's it's still pretty huge. Yeah. Um, but, so th there are these kind of characters that, I mean, a lot of people know even in Icelandic cultures and all these Nordic cultures that there are these, like, gnomes elves, goblins, yeah. these kind of things that, that are, uh, at least when you translate them, them to English, that's kind of what they come out. But as we just talked yeah, about... Yeah, in Finnish language, goblin, 
which has nothing to do with the your average goblin from fantasy role playing games or Lord of the Rings or whatever. Yeah, Labyrinth with David Bowie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not those guys. <laughs> which is, by the way, an awesome. Yeah, movie. that's Jim Henson fucking. That's one of my favorites. Actually, that one. Yeah. But uh, so I mean, do you have uh, or could you explain to me like what what did was the goblin about? You know, let's let's choose the goblin for now. You know, because I would assume like what was it that gnomes even might have lived under rocks or something like that? You know, th that's kind of almost like a thing that uh, gnomes seem to be have something to do with rocks all the time. Yeah, but and the, 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 all of, all of these ties together with the spirits of the dead. Yeah, they were like these, um, not undead, but they were because when you died, your physical body died as a person that you were, but the spirits lingered on. Mm. And these gnomes that you are referring, uh, uh, meningkaiset. Right. They had like uh, to believe to have specific uh, meningkain meningkain and races. Okay. For every different thing like the ditches that I mentioned oh, okay. and, and you basically need to appease them or or the porch or the sauna or your cattle mm -hmm. or your whatever uh, you need to appease them and not to piss them off so they don't retaliate screw around with your screw stuff. around with you but like yeah. make your milk sour or or uh, ruin your crop yeah or yeah. Uh, drive your light your sauna on fire yeah light your sauna on fire yeah exactly or or like a curse you or whatever or drove your game away you know yeah, yeah. hunting hunting wise so you need to appease them and you need to uh, the way you appease them was like to honor them in mm. like taking in consideration that they live there right under your porch or under that tree or whatever uh, and you offered them sacrifices okay let's say that you are brewing an ale mm. and uh, you got the ale ready, and the first batch of that ale, you honored those spirits, gnomes, elves, meningad, mahiset, by offering them a taste of your hmm. fresh brewing. Right. So you went to their place, like we had these pitamus trees, okay. which were common like birch uh, or uh, kuusi koivu. Okay. whatever finish yeah. normal trees that were selected like this tree had some specific meaning like exactly this tree is the holy tree the pitamus tree where you offered your sacrifices right so you went there and offered your sacrifices from those crops that you got or uh, those ales that you brew mm. and stuff and you kept them content the spirits and they didn't screw around with you and uh, and if they did it was because your stuff was shit yeah, or yeah, or you disrespect. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, exactly. Your stuff was shit, or you disrespected them somehow in your mm -hmm. thoughts or your your daily actions. Yeah, you didn't yeah. honor them or or what. And the major offense would have been that you cut down that tree. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it was it's a holy quite tree. Quite a quite a, almost like a really interesting idea that um, by giving this kind of like, uh, see the the rocks or the ground or the trees or all these the nature things around you that you give them. Uh, more of a, uh, I guess a life, like a, a life value. Although they're all, mm. as we know now, that they're all like living entities and living things. Right. Some even, uh, most even plants, I think, have even more of a, I guess a not a brain, but something more of like some of these like sea urchins that are actually moving around in the in the sea, like clams, for for instance. You know, that actually some plants have much far. Uh, more complicated, like, uh, I don't know if you'd call it nervous systems. But anyway, I guess that idea that you would respect that land that you're on, you know, because that land is giving you your life. Yeah. Uh, and please, those gods or beings that are guarding... The spirits of the dead, yeah. Yeah, the spirits of the dead. And it kind of makes sense that you would then you know, respect your environment. Yeah, as the, as the people saw them back in the day, it was a trade, mm. you know? Yeah. You need to maintain a balance between the world of the living and the world of the dead, which controlled everything. Yeah. And you were giving them taste of your success, which they allowed you to have, mm. and they were giving back you the good, you know, good fortune and yeah. 
which which left it, you alone. Which is the funny thing is that that kind of in a in a in kind of like a mother mother nature, you know, mother earth kind of idea is that you know, if you disrespected the environment to a huge agree, degree, you know, cut down all your trees and you know, farmed like a maniac and killed all the animals just to have a bunch of clothes or you know skins yeah. or m meat and that would probably go bad anyway then you would be eventually be screwed over yeah so in, in a lot of ways yeah and if you're japanese godzilla happens well i think godzilla would have it anyway yeah and but like just i'm just saying you know yet. like this type of yeah. uh storytelling in these days is has some similar you know roots that's true yeah if and I, it seemed like that yeah. that's just how it was before we would call it maybe organized yeah. religion came to give their answers. Yeah, the Christianity came and took over. And I believe, like, if we uh, now we talk about Christianity, like, even the church, like, were taking consideration those old holy places mm. where people used to offer sacrifices and yeah. went and they established churches on those yeah. places. And I think even uh, in a lot of these, um, when there was this conversion over to from pagan to Christianity a lot of the times it was like hey you guys are actually having the same religion we are but we have but we know more about it so you're celebrating this um, holy day mm. that's uh, you know uh, that you represent with eggs and rabbits and but that's actually the day or the time when your savior sacrificed himself and rose from the dead and this kind of stuff so these like in in a way respecting some might say some will say the absolute opposite but respecting those already existing kind of holy times yeah like it was a good summer, tactic too i think summer equinox say. and <laughs> winter equinox and mm. and solstices and yeah um or johannes the yeah. midsummer yeah that's going to be really cool too because yeah, it kind of ties in with this whole so yeah so uh, i think like those days that you mentioned which came from the which came from the old beliefs and system. We had still have those like the beginning of the crop season. You know, like when you start to yeah um, putting your seed into mm. the so land and <laughs> interesting when you took crop out. Yeah. Which, by the way, were the days too when you sacrificed to get a good fortune and uh, to celebrate your good yeah. fortune afterwards. Was there any sacrifices like you know chopping a goat's head off? No, uh, no, no, no. They weren't like. It wasn't so black metal. No, it was. It wasn't like anything like that hardcore. They were basically sacrificing food. Yeah. And and beer and stuff like whatever it was. Yeah. And of course, then in the later days, when the Christianity was here already, some of those old beliefs still existed, and there were these witches and actual witch witch panic and witch hunt in Finland, which I actually read a book just mm. last winter. We could actually do an episode. Do you guys like to hear about Finnish witch hunts uh, on the yeah. under the Swedish rule? Yeah, I want to hear about it. <laughs> well, 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 let's talk about it in the yeah. future. But yeah, like uh, those kinds of things. And of course, you were bringing something for a witch of fortune teller who were telling your hmm. truth. That that's kind of a sacrifice too. But yeah, not not that hardcore like human sacrificing thing that the yeah. Mayans did Almost or anything. More like bringing a gift. Yeah. You know, it was like a gift. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting stuff. I mean, uh, I think a lot of people think of these Nordic countries, um, you know, land of the Vikings mm -hmm. and uh, these kind of like brutal uh, kind of things where here it seems like the roots of um, maybe these ancient Finnish beliefs are very much in like peace, uh, honor of the dead yeah. and uh, and... and um, one with nature. It was always maintaining a balance between yeah, the, the living and the dead. Yeah. There. And I guess we are finishing up here, but I, I must say that the people who are interested, you should go out and uh, Google Mikael Agricola. And uh, yeah, there was a list of deities, these old Finnish spirits and uh, spirits of the dead and mm. forms of the dead. Uh, dated back in 1551, so if you're interested, a bunch of those names, you could Google that down, and if I find it, I could actually yeah. drop it down in the links. Good idea. But yeah, as I was saying, that uh, 
everything was controlled by the dead and you need to maintain a balance between the world of the living and world of the dead and they wasn't they weren't malicious evil spirits or any anything like that unless you piss them off by disrespecting them or not giving them an offering do you know this um it's kind of this whole like elves being in inside the trees and you know not not like what people i guess believe all right what popular culture has shown elves to be you know santa's little helpers or yeah, not these elves things kind of like that <laughs> even i have, have read and, th- uh, we have those uh, you're talking about the santa's elves now well i was going to use the santa's elves as an, as an example okay um that uh, there was one theory that um uh, that the Santa's elves were in a way almost like based off of those, uh, what are those mushrooms that are red with the dots on top, the white dots? Karpasini. Uh, yeah, that those... Really poisonous. Yeah, mushroom, and yeah. would give you hallucinations. And I guess there was even medicine... And if you're a kid, you could die. Yeah, there were even medicine men who dried them and mm. and gave them out as like, you know, some kind of medicine at yeah. some point in time. But anyway, that they were uh, some kind of connection where you would eat that mushroom and have hallucinations and you would you know else. transcend to the other other planes or blah 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 but um but the idea that elves were part of the nature they weren't actually like a dude running around you know what i mean well if we extend this a little bit i have to uh, mention uh, first of all those red-headed red-headed yeah santa's helpers and those elves in the nature that you were pointing out are called tonttu. Yeah, Finnish, that's right. Yeah. Finnish language. And I believe we go to Sweden now, but there is this fucking excellent, excellent book about tonttus. It's in Finnish suuri tonttu kirja. Okay. And it was one of the biggest influences for me when I was a kid. It was all about the these uh, natures, tonttus, who hmm. lived in the forest and had dealings. Uh, they were treating the animals and taking care of the forest. And it's really like... A, low level fantasy but like a written in a real way it was hmm. basically this storybook but it felt real yeah in that that you could actually spot tontus in the forest when you were a kid and yeah, yeah. and they had dealings with the trolls and the trolls were hmm. trying to kill them and eat them and the trolls were hideous and sounds sounds fun yeah you actually you need to read I got to read it to yeah kids. for sure yeah yeah and the, but the what i was getting at is this uh do you know the green man uh this like um Basically, there's a lot of sculptures. You see it a lot in, you know, hippie places or whatever, where they might even carve it into a tree or something. But it's, it's usually like a face that you can make up. Uh, like you know, you know, if you have a really creative imagination, uh, you look in the trees or whatever, and sometimes you know the knots and things on the trees. They can kind of look like a face, as if the tree has a yeah. a being inside yeah. it. And uh, I don't know the f- the full like uh, mythology about this green man, but it's you see it in constant these sculptures and you know uh, hanging up, and it's it seems to be very much like a that kind of uh, that style of a entity, this spirit that be like belongs to the nature that you that you should um, appease or or respect respect yeah and i think that that that's a real like maybe it's a interesting way to to um get people to give respect to nature or you know at, at i guess at that time that's the reasoning that they would give that it had this spirit entity in it you know but uh i i guess at that time there was some kind of balance happening here in the in this land that turned into finland Yeah. Suomi. Yeah. So it's really interesting stuff. So if you found that interesting, please, we'd appreciate it to give us a like. It helps us out immensely. And if you'd like to hear more of this Finland for Foreigners series, which we're going to give you anyway, definitely subscribe and comment about this. What do you guys know or what do you think about these old school ancient belief systems and uh, ideas that has kind of cropped up here in Finland back in the day when Vikings were roaming around and pillaging things and uh, who knows what was going on over in the Russian territories. But anyway, this is definitely interesting stuff and we'd love to have a conversation with you about it uh, following this video. But uh, yeah, like, 
subscribe, comment, and of course, ring that bell. Bell.